Thank you. Yes. Uh, what I consider myself a happy person. Like I literally admit that I have everything I need in my life. And uh, but what irritates me and what what is my passion is that when I'm traveling around the world, then I see so many miserable people everywhere, or just sad. And this makes me so sad and less happy. And when I started to analyze the reasons, then some there are many reasons, of course, but some of them are related very much to the nation state they were born at. Like, it seems for me unfair that nation states have so huge power on us on whether we are happy or not. And it's kind of like lottery, like uh, where you were born and uh, what is the likelihood that whether you can become happy or not there. And um, this is what I'll try to change it in my life. I'll try to make people less dependent on their nations where they were born. And uh, I'll crew, go through the journey. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to sell e-residency too hard. I have two videos, one minute videos, and they are for sales purposes. So um, forgive me for that. But, but otherwise, uh, I like the very beginning of today. So I don't need to go too deeply into that. But to understand the nation today, is to understand that it's so little period what we are living here at the moment. Like the Homo the sapiens, what we heard, have been living for millions of years, gathering, hunting in small groups. And agriculture just kicks in like 12,000 years ago. Families become bigger, living longer, domesticated animals. And very interestingly, uh, very little science, in my understanding, delivers whether people were happier back then or during agriculture or industrial revolution. Like a few hundred years ago, imagine that, if this would be the timeline like we saw in, in the morning, like a few seconds. A few hundred years ago, just nation states started to emerge. A few hundred years. And uh, like that struck me when I started to analyze that, and which we take as granted, has actually been evolving so rapidly. And, uh, and this is the border of two nations. And, uh, and for me, this life, in many senses, is like lottery. Like, uh, like imagine, imagine your life on Facebook, that you were born on Facebook. It's just your digital yourself. And you are randomly allocated to one Facebook group. There are great groups, but there are groups like Trump supporters and that the planet Earth is flat, you know. And you need to stick with that group forever. And you need to like, you need to have the same values of that group. And uh, I, I think this is unfair. And this creates different disruptions, and, and we will see them more and more throughout the next years. I, I truly believe that. What true automation, of course, happens now is that as we are getting more less dependent on those nations and those locations uh, than ever before. And uh, different statistics show that uh, the work of digital nomadism and uh, freelancer space is rapidly going to increase. And uh, if you Google digital nomadism, you can get those pictures. It's like, it seems that they are very happy people. <laughs> they can live where they are, where it's warm, and work the hours they want to, to create the work. In theory, I don't know whether it's true or not, but, uh, but at least uh, this is what I'll try to drive our nation and other nations towards to, to try to start serving those global citizens at the beginning who don't want to be dependent on their nation state. And I'll try to explain uh, what and how I'm doing that. So uh, three years ago, uh, I started a program called e-residency then, uh, so that every person on the planet can become our digital citizen. Uh, it costs 100 euros to become our digital citizen, and you have a face-to-face -face meeting with Estonia official, you give your fingerprints, and you get digital ID. You can't travel to Estonia or to EU with that, but you can access our digital platform. Uh, you use the services, what we have. Uh, so, and the decision to become a digital nation in that sense uh, is, uh, is quite dramatic, because the first time we would like to serve everyone globally. We would like to say that our nation is for everyone, not only for those who were born there. And why we can do that is because 
kind of Estonia, I would say, was very lucky, like 15 years ago after got getting more independence. Uh, it managed to build itself from scratch. And this is the decentralized way it has built itself, uh, the technology. So we mentioned before in the morning the healthcare, for example. This, for example, here is the healthcare record. So I can log into there. I can check who owns my data, uh, who is using that data, who has changed that data. And that gives me the confidence that I own my data as it's blockchain. So it gives the trust that no one has uh, access to my data without my knowledge. And the statistics which you showed that who trust the government, like I, I trust the government because I don't need to trust anyone there. Uh, I can check through technology uh, about my data and everything I own. And I can give rights to other governments to use my data if they want to. Uh, and this decentralized way has enabled us to scale in the sense that we can add and add more services. So today you can't only marry and divorce online and everything else you can do. And, uh, for example, last times I've been voting, I did it online, e-police, school medicine, everything. And, uh, and this, this then enabled these thousands of services, and the latest then was the e-residency, uh, then you can also access those platform. So when I launched e-residency three years ago, uh, I wasn't exactly sure why should you want to become our digital citizen, like what's the purpose of that? Uh, but Throughout the first days, we realized that most people wanted to join because of the business environment. And the business environment became the thing which we started to sell. Here residents joined, they established within a day company, bank account, PayPal, created a website, started selling goods, services online. And I'll show you this one uh, first one minute video about, about this. Our new digital world knows no borders, and great business ideas are no longer limited by where you work or live. E-Estonia is a digital nation for global citizens, for those who've thrown off the shackles of national boundaries. Literally anyone in the world can apply. E-residency is legitimate and transparent, a government-issued digital identity that gives you the freedom to run a global EU company online from anywhere in the world. Establish a company within a day. Access business banking. Use international payment providers. Digitally sign documents and contracts and declare Estonian taxes online. We're Estonia. Tech is our expertise. And through e-residency, we are empowering entrepreneurs everywhere. No matter where you were born, no matter what passport you carry, you can apply. Use e-residency to run your business from anywhere in the world. Unleash your entrepreneurial potential. Because no business should be bound by physical borders. Apply for e-residency today and join our new digital nation. e-resident.gov.ee So, uh Every month we have incremental growth, uh, like startups do. Uh, and uh, this is quite difficult to comprehend, but nations now can become service providers. And, uh, and if you're from private sector, you understand what this where it can lead to. With, if you do some math and see it, and after five years we have more companies by year residents than uh, from citizens. And although they are paying taxes in their home countries and employing people in their home countries, they still use our services and income. And my estimation is that after 10 years, this is the major source of income for our nation. And uh, which means also that we can change our business and revenue models. We don't need to ask taxation anymore. We, didn't need to, we don't need to stay as we are. And this happens within years. Uh, I'll show you the second and last one minute video about today's core reasons why and how people benefit from that. While some countries push people away, Estonia pulls them in. What kind of problems can e-residency solve for an entrepreneur? Say you're a freelance writer in Ukraine and you need to receive international payments. E-residency enables it. Or maybe you run a startup in India and need access to cross-border capital to help scale internationally. E-residency allows it. What if you're a digital nomad or expat and want to run your company after you move to a different country? 
E-Residency is the answer. You might be outside the EU, but want a trusted company registered inside the world's largest single market. E-Residency can make it happen. Or if you're already an EU citizen, but you want to lower the cost and hassle of administrating your company, E-Residency makes that possible. Maybe you have multiple board members all over the world. E-Residency means board decisions and contracts can be legally approved online instantly. Whatever your nationality, whatever your situation, applying for E-Residency is the best way to run a global EU company fully online with minimal cost and hassle. Apply for E-Residency today and join our new digital nation. So, as said, most, most revenues go to their home countries, the Indian, the Ukrainian, the Turkish person who today can't do global sales. Now hiring people, paying tax in their home countries and do. And that's why I see this as our gift to the world and uh, what we can be proud of. Uh, I see that every nation should find something how they benefit the global world. Uh, as the work becomes more as a unified organism. Uh, and this is our role, what we can offer today, this digital platform. The business environment, like leave it there, it's just one thing which is like low hanging fruit. What I want to do is I want to change the whole nation to borderless, meaning that start offering healthcare globally, start offering cryptocurrencies, tokens. This was my last idea one month ago which I'm now pursuing to launch test coins uh, so that uh, each person on the planet uh, can invest in this platform uh, through the digital tokens and exchange value globally. Uh, and, uh, and eventually what we have seen now is that other nations are joining. I see this like a movement because Nowadays, it doesn't matter anymore what's the size of your economy, how many citizens you live. It matters who has the best services. And this makes countries really to compete to each other. Like, you can be a huge country, but eventually, if there are other countries offering better services, then your citizens are uh, opting in to the other nation. I see that after three years, we have at least five more countries offering e-residency. Last week, Azerbaijan, of our residents, they copy pasted our website even. So, uh, and uh, they're coming Singapore, Dubai, and others, and Netherlands, by the way, there are many Dutch people here, uh, helping them also at the moment, and Finland, many Finns here, uh, very, very close by. This means that nation states become a service providers, and you can choose different nations where you want to opt in. I see that after some years, I have seven, eight different nation states in my pocket. And I'll choose where do I trust my healthcare, where do I trust my business, my personal life, and everything else. And this, I truly believe, would make nations better to handle you as a citizens, to take care of you. It's not any more monopoly, uh, because you can choose another one. And I truly believe this can actually help us uh, in a better way. So I would like to leave this discussion with some questions also and imagine that it's 10 years from now uh, when we meet again. And uh, questions are, what nation the world serves those 1 billion global citizens who are out there who don't want to be attached to a nation? What services will you use from your own country if you are a digital citizen of 10 other nations? What will be the source of the income for the country if the cryptocurrencies are eating all your taxation? Today, already EU residents are paying taxes uh, through cryptocurrencies and we don't get any taxation anyway. Like, um, taxes are history in that sense. What happens with countries who go to scaling mode and let's say 1000% GDP growth per year? Because startups do, now nations can do it also. Are people going to be happier if there are many nations to choose in between? And I believe they are. Thank you. Thank you. So, do Estonians trust their government more than the rest of the Europeans trust theirs? Statistics say that they, they do. Why? Maybe it's because it's small and you know prime minister was living next to you and you know a president is 
the schoolmate of that, my friend, and everybody knows everyone, and then it's kind of hard to believe those conspiracy theories that the same president is actually following you on the internet or something. Like, it, it's difficult to believe that. But of course, technology also helps there to own the data and to control your life, that you don't need to trust papers. You don't need to trust someone about your thing. So at the moment, it, at least we see that people trust, and the residents also trust, actually. So, so, so you're also described in uh, Andrew Keane's new book. Uh, oh. So, so you're mentioned there on page Is seven. Andrew here? Well, he, he left actually mm. uh, uh, this morning, he had to go back. Uh, but uh, on page 76, uh, you are uh, including your president as well. But what, what, what is more interesting about that is that he describes in his book, and I don't know if it's true, but that you have a radically different view of privacy, right? That the data is open to everyone, there's no privacy, but at least you're in control of who's looking at your data. Is that correct? So, and so we have lots of open data, but still when it comes to data which needs to be private, like healthcare, like voting, everything is private and it's encrypted and no one can access that without your ID. So uh, in that sense, that critical data is still private. But the blockchain there helps to increase the uh, yes, trust because uh, like we can trust mathematics and encryption. You know, we don't need to trust government employees who promised not to do anything with our data. So, so but, but as an e-resident or as an Estonian, you can always see which government agency has looked yeah. at your data. Yeah, and if I don't, I can block them to do that. For example, if I fall ill, I'll get e-prescriptions, then I allow the pharmacist to prescribe <laughs> e-prescription to me. I could do it physically also, and then the pharmacist couldn't access my health data. Mm -hmm. But I choose to do it because it's more convenient. Mm -hmm. So now I did some research on you on the internet, obviously, and I saw that you met with Angela Merkel and I saw a picture with Macron. Um, how are they responding when they hear about your e-residency? Are they worried or are they becoming an e-resident of Estonia? Or uh, Angela Merkel is e-resident of Estonia. She right? is. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Like In general, what I'm worried about, about the EU is that... Uh, like, if you consider EU would be a company, like, and inside our companies we know that there are always fires to deal with, you know. <laughs> there are always one fire after another, and every day it seems that the last fire hasn't, like, uh, solved and the new, new problems arise, you know, and this is what they see with uh, the EU, like, we're only dealing with fires, the only problems, only challenges. Of course we need to deal with them, but we put so little effort on tomorrow and growth and something new, which would, like, eliminate future fires, you know, and that's why the whole like digitalization and innovation in that sense in the EU level is not there and it's just the bus uh, at the moment, so unfortunately, no. And, and this e-resonancy, yeah? so, so, so we have this, what is it, the Paradise Papers where we see all these tax deals and I think the Netherlands is profiting from many of these <laughs> tax deals in Ireland is famous eh, with Apple not paying or 0.005%. When all these companies become e-resident of Estonia, is there a tax incentive for them? How, they or, still should pay is taxes. Is taxation still like, existing in the future? Uh, yeah, I, I don't believe it does exist, but uh, at, at the moment what helps is transparency. At least this platform, what we have, each company taxation is transparent. We can see how much they pay Taxation, taxation, social tax, and everything else, how much they should pay in their home countries or to Estonia. So, and this transparency is what really helps us to get like people who don't want to avoid uh, their, I don't know, business behavior or something like that, they are open about that to that platform. And criminals who want to do shady business or hmm. pay in paper, uh, they don't come to the platform. So, so, it's radical transparency, so you don't need these leaks yeah, there are anymore. No leaks. It's yeah. just open in, uh, to the public, everyone. So the last question for you. So yesterday we talked about this, this lack of governance for players like Apple, Google, Facebook, and Amazon, right? So that they can do, they're surveilling the data, they create a huge power position uh, over you. Is this, this program that you have in Estonia, is, are you taking, how do you call it, responsibility to governing yeah. these yeah. companies? So this is one thing I think why EU has some competitive advantage like over other areas in the world is that 
it's the new EU regulations in uh, data protection acts and uh, uh, says that the humans, uh, the citizens will be uh, the owners of their data uh, and, uh, and we can start selling our data to Google and Facebook if you want to. And this applies and forces within a few years. It creates a whole new opportunities for business applications, but most, most importantly, it creates, uh, it empowers citizens to hold their data and to see who wants to use that data in the first place. So I think uh, in that sense, uh, uh, EU is in good position and, and because uh, the digital agenda is led by Estonian ex-Prime Minister. Ah, so that's, the, that's our hope. <laughs> Estonia will lead the way into this digital field. It, it needs collaboration, like obviously. Like, uh, mm -hmm. we, we don't lose if others don't follow, and, but, but we do help every day. Okay, Kaspar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting. <laughs>